Hi, welcome to Titan Tips, a video series where we here at Titan Reloading hope to make your future reloading sessions just a little bit easier. My name is Michael, and today we're going to be covering the Loadmaster. Uh, the Loadmaster is a progressive press produced by Lee Precision, and because it is a progressive press, we're going to break this into a multiple video segments. That way we can kind of pinpoint on the exact topic that we're talking about to help you find uh, what you might be looking for. So this video we're going to be doing an overview, talking about the capabilities of the Loadmaster, and then going through the operations of the Loadmaster to kind of help you better understand the press. Uh, so the capabilities of the press, the Loadmaster, again being a progressive, is designed to be able to produce hundreds of rounds in an hour. Uh, usually with my reloading I easily can do 300 rounds in an hour on this press. Though I've had guys tell me that they get up to four or 500 rounds in an hour with relative ease once you get it up and running. Another thing about the Loadmaster is the cartridges that you can reload on it span anywhere from the 25 ACP all the way up to the 300 Winchester Magnum. So there is a pretty wide span of cartridges you can load on the Loadmaster. But if you do decide to do rifle, there are some special considerations that you're going to want to keep in mind that we will talk about after the operation of the press. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to start going into the operation of this press. All right, so this Loadmaster is our own personal Loadmaster set up in 9mm Luger. It has pretty much all the optional items that Lee makes put on the press, along with a few other items for our own convenience. Uh, so talking about what we got on the press and the die positions, the first one here is a universal decapping die to punch out your old primers. We have moved what is traditionally in the first spot over to the second, which is the carbide sizing die, removing that decapping mandrel. And what that allows us to do is size the brass, pinning it in place as it seats the primer. That way there is no wobble. So it helps it align everything a bit better. We have the auto drum powder measure, which in my opinion is definitely better than the auto disc. So I would choose that one if it is an option for you. Uh, here we have the bullet seating die along with the bullet feed system and the multi-tube adapter set on it. And then in the last spot, which is hidden behind the handle here, is the Lee factory crimp die. So pretty much the way that this press is going to operate is you are going to feed your brass into the case feeder here. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. So what's going to happen is the brass is resting on top of this slider here. And as you bring the lever down, it's going to slide to the back. And then as you bring it back up, it's going to move it to the rear position and allow one brass casing to drop. And as you bring this forward, it is going to put it basically on deck to actually enter the shell plate. Again, when you start bringing it up, it is going to allow the brass to enter the shell plate and move back to collect another brass casing. And at this point, it would be punching out at the top here, the spent primer. Okay, so I moved the camera to the back to give you a better view of this half of the primer feed operation. And what's going to happen is you are indexing the shell plate. The casing is going to hit this lever arm. And what that's going to do is push it to the back to allow a primer to feed in. And as you bring the ram up again, the primer wedge bar is going to push down on that lever arm and force the primer under the casing and over the primer pin, seating the primer. Now the primer pin is moved on the other side of the press, so let me get a good view for that. Okay, so this side of the press is going to be what is actually moving that primer pin. There is this rocker arm down here, and that actually uh, touches right below the pin and is what forces it up. This bolt right here is going to be what causes it to move. So as you bring the ram upwards, it's going to hit the bolt and then force the primer pin upwards in order to seat the primer. 
moving up. Not a whole lot to see with the powder feeding function, but it is a case actuated powder feed, meaning that since there is a case in the shell plate right now, you can see it right here, it's gonna be entering. It is going to cause this to turn and dump the powder. Now there is no case in it right now. So again, you'll see it's not gonna move. So you don't have to worry about dumping powder if you don't have any cases. It is set up to take care of that for you. And then on the lead press, this chain right here that connects to the bottom of the shell plate carrier, that is gonna be what resets the powder measure. Okay, so now we are on to the bullet feeding, bullet seating step here. And if you do decide to use the Lee bullet feeder, it is important that you leave this empty or if you're using the multi-tube feed adapter offset until you are ready to start feeding bullets. This is not case actuated. So if it, there are bullets to feed, it will attempt to feed them whether there's a case there or not. So now that I got a case there, I'll just slip this over. And hopefully you can see the bullet seating on the finger down here. And what's gonna happen is when you raise up the lever, it's gonna slide out the bullet feed, set it on top of the bullet and seat it. Return that back and get ready for the next bullet. And again, slide it over, seat it, return for the next bullet. Now I only put three in there to kind of show that when there is only one bullet left, it's just gonna throw it out. Uh, my dad always jokes saying that it's a early warning system letting you know that it's empty and you gotta refill it. So at least you got that little bit. But with the multi-two feed adapter here, you can just turn this each time you empty them out and then continue going. If you're using the single stack, you would then of course have to uh, fill it back up. And now we are on to the last die or the last stage here. And what's gonna happen, just like everything else, you're gonna bring this up. It is going to crimp it. And then it just kicks it out at the end. And then we have a, what would be a fully loaded round if I was feeding primers and powder. But since this is just demoing it, I didn't. Um, but that is the operation of the Loadmaster. And yours can run just this smoothly and we'll help you do that when we start going over the specific operations of this press. Okay, so the way that this press indexes, there are a few parts that are a part of the indexing system. So there's the shell plate carrier. Of course, it's the shell plate that indexes. There is the indexing rod and flipper here. And then the frame itself is a part of the indexing system. So when you bring the ram all the way to the top, there's a little nub here that is going to set the indexing flipper over to the side. It's gonna cant it over, and then it's gonna ride down this rib here until it gets kicked out by this part of the frame. And then as you bring it up, you're just gonna push the indexing rod forward, which is gonna be what forces this to index. As you just saw, there is this uh, piece here that kicks out the brass, but it also has another function. There is this tail here. And what this tail does is it sits inside these little holes and it stops it from being able to go backwards. Um, so that is the indexing system. So as I mentioned before, if you do decide to reload rifle cartridges on the Loadmaster, there are a few special considerations that you gotta keep in mind. First is going to be the case feeder. If you are going to reload any cartridges that are taller than the 223, there is no case feeder for it. The brass is just too tall where it's not gonna be able to stabilize when it hits the bottom and it's just gonna bounce straight out of the case feeder. So cartridges, the 223, Remington, uh, 76239, 300 Blackout, there's a case feeder for anything larger. You're gonna have to put the brass on there by hand and then the slider will do the rest of the work for you. 
The next thing is going to be the optional setup that we have for the pistol here. Uh, again, it's the universal decapping die and the sizing die with the decapping mandrel removed. And the removing of the decapping mandrel is the reason why you cannot do that with rifle. The pistol, it still sizes it perfectly fine with or without that decapping mandrel, but with a rifle cartridge, that expanding bulge is what sizes the case neck. So if you remove that decapping mandrel, it no longer can size the neck of the brass. So you're gonna have undersized by probably close to five or six thousandths, uh, which is much more than what you want. Uh, Lee does have a solution for that, however, with their new quick trim dies. The quick trim dies have O-rings at the bottom of the die, which will stabilize the brass. And then the top portion of the die is actually sized to the case neck diameter, so the top won't be able to wiggle either. So if you want something to stabilize your brass while it's in there, the quick trim die for rifle cartridges is your option. Lastly, it's going to be the case conditioning requirement on rifle brass. Uh, pistols, you don't have to trim because the amount of growth that they have is almost negligible and the brass generally becomes unusable before it becomes unsafe. But that is not the case with rifle brass. Because it has a shoulder and because the brass cases are thicker, they have a tendency to grow out more each time you fire them. And then when you size them, you're squeezing the brass back down and it's just stretching it out. You can have cases grow uh, one or two hundredths between each firing, which is gonna make them unsafe in the chamber of your rifle after one, two firings. Uh, so you do have to trim your cases before you even bring them to the loadmaster to start doing the reloading process. So that's been the overview of the loadmaster. So we've covered progressive press, we cover the operations of the press, capabilities of the press, and if you're looking to possibly purchase one, but there are some reviews that you've read or some complaints that you've seen about the Loadmaster, the next few videos that we're gonna be putting out are to help you get over those issues. Again, we're gonna be covering the indexing system, specifically the primer feed, the case feed, and then a few of the other odds and ends tips to kind of help you get this thing up running smoothly, just like our press here. If you found this video helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. If there's anything that you would like us to specifically cover, uh, feel free to put that in the comments section below. And as always, happy reloading.